continuing with our scarf series the original one we did was the basic scarf one two and three well i've already done scarf number one and scarf number two scarf number one was the basic knit and then when you stretched it out it gave you that unique look scarf number two was using two different sizes of needles so it caused the scallop scarf number three is a little bit more advanced it has a drop stitch it has yarn over knit two together eyelets and it has this interesting little dash where you do uh, two slip stitches and then you knit two and this is the yarn that goes behind the two knit stitches and then it's just repetitive all the way up but it's all knit there's no purling whatsoever so let's go ahead and get started uh, it has a lot of rolls to it this one has um, 56 rolls so it'll take a little bit to get it all done but uh, a lot of it is repetitive because you, when you make it rolls this one is your first design your eyelet your second design and then your dash line is your third then after that you repeat eyelet drop stitch eyelet dash eyelet drop stitch so uh, i will do definitely this much so you can see how each of the individual sections go and then you just repeat in the directions are in there and how to repeat it i don't want to drag it out too long and make it an hour and a half for to make this scarf so i will like to abbreviate it as much as i can but still make it as understandable now i'm not going to do 36 stitches across because same reason that that's a lot of um stitching to do and it's done in sets of four as you can see here i have four stitches for every inch you want to do everything is basically done in twos uh, so i'm going to do probably 30 or 28 we'll see when i get to it but you would follow the directions all the way or i may just do the 36. i hope i pulled enough yarn out to do 36 stitches i can always pause the video and um, go across the roll because each roll is very repetitive of itself and then when i get to the end i can show how to do the next section so we'll see how it goes i know in the beginning you're supposed to knit eight rolls well i'm not going to knit eight rolls because you know how to knit i may knit four rolls just to get across and have a little bit of a base the reason for eight is that way your bottom and your side garter stitches uh, are about the same width that's the only reason for doing the eight rolls down here and you want it to look even and balanced i'm just doing my cast on how many do i have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two 26, 28, 30, 32, okay, 33, 34, 35, 36. Okay, I got all 36. And like I said, the first eight rolls is just plain old net. And we all know how to knit. Since we've already done basic scarf number one and basic scarf number two, we've already got the knit stitch well in our muscle memory in our hands and in our brains so knitting is simple straightforward easy going after you've done a little bit it'll get to the point where you can possibly even do it without looking your, your fingers will tell you where the stitch is because when you go like this you'll feel the stitch and you know the needle would have to go under that stitch that would take a little bit of practice but you will be able to get to the point where you can knit without looking and that's so nice because if you're doing a plain old roll of knit and you're watching something on TV at the same time, you know every stitch is going to be correct. But now if you're doing an elaborate stitch, you're going to have to ignore the TV in order to get your elaborate stitch done correctly. Otherwise, there'll be tinking involved and no one likes to tink. All that work to take out. What I'll do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to knit up four rows and then I'll be back. Okay, I have the four rows knitted. Like I said, I'm only going to do four, but normally you would do eight. 
and then you would start here at the beginning let's see if i can put something here to help keep track of what line we're on so we're right there where it says knit four yo stands for yarn over which i'll show you how to do and then knit one and you notice it's between parentheses so you repeat what's between the parentheses to the last four stitches and then you knit four so let's start at the beginning we knit four This is the drop stitch roll. Okay, there's the knit four. Now we're going to yarn over to yarn over. Just take the yarn, simply wrap it around the needle clockwise. Is that clockwise? I believe it is. And then you knit one. We do it again. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, knit one. And you do this all the way across. Yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. I like to keep my needles close together so after I get to this part, instead of just taking it off and then doing the yarn over, after I do this and go here, I just do the yarn over and then take it off the needle. It's the same thing, it's just I'm doing it in one less step. See? Otherwise, you do knit one, remove it, yarn over, knit one, remove it, yarn over. What I'm doing is after I knit one, before I remove it, I do my yarn over and then remove it. It's just a way to hasten the stitch because it just re takes one motion out of doing the stitch, but the stitch is still correct. I'm just about to the end. It goes fairly quickly because I kind of skipped that one step by joining the two together. It's like instead of doing A and B, I just do A, B together. And I do this all the way to the last four stitches, one, two, three, four, and I end with a knit. Because that's what it says, you end with a knit, and then you have four stitches left, which I have, and then I knit four. Three, four, okay, there we go. And now we've just doubled the amount of stitches we have on our needle, but you notice every other one is a yarn over. See, that's a yarn over. There's a knit. There's a yarn over. There's a knit. There's a yarn over. So every other one is a yarn over. Okay, now let's go to row 10. It says knit four, knit one, drop the yarn over by slipping it off the needle and not knitting it and repeat across. Okay, so we knit four. Okay, so now we knit one. And there's the yarn over. See how it's kind of open? You just drop it off your needle. Then you knit the knit stitch, drop off the yarn over. Knit the knit stitch, drop off the yarn over. And it's just do that all the way across. Knit, drop, knit, drop. So like I said, it's very repetitious and you get a lot of practice doing the two stitches that makes a drop stitch roll. Because the first row is knit one yarn over. Second row is knit one, drop the yarn over. And the whole pattern is complete after you drop the yarn over. We're just about done. Now 
Now, if you're not up to where I'm at, when you get to this point, you can pause the video until you get to the last four stitches and knit the last four. Or pause it and knit the last four and then turn. Okay, so as you see, by dropping that one stitch, it lengthened. The yarn over has been lengthened, and that, that's what gives us this nice set of stitches. Okay, we turn our work. Now row 11 through 18. So it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, well, 11 is the end. So that makes you're going to knit nine rolls. Usually only knit eight, but you want to finish on, on the uh, reverse side. All even stitches is the wrong side. All odd stitches is the right side, at least in this particular case. So we're going to knit nine rolls and I'm, I'm just going ahead and knit this one. And that way you can see how the yarn over roll is not affected. I mean, the drop stitch roll is not affected because it's two, it's one roll down, but you want to knit everyone and just be careful. You don't stretch the stitches because if you stretch the stitches, it can look a little wonky. And we try not to stretch stitches if we don't have to. Now, if the directions say to stretch them, obviously we want to stretch them. Now, I know once I do the yarn over roll, I like to pull the stitches down like you see me do. I went like this and pulled them all down to make sure they were all nice and even in their length. And we can do it again at the end of this roll. You want to have four ridges between each pattern and four ridges is two rolls. So four times two is eight, but we have to do that one odd roll to get back to the front of our work. Let's get to the end here. We're just about to the end. And like, like I said, just a plain old knit roll. This whole thing is all knit, just different ways of manipulating the knit. Okay. There, now you can see how the drop stitch roll comes into play. Now I'm going ahead and knit the other eight rolls. I'm just going to pause the video while I do them. All right, I have them knitted. And you can see here there's two, four, six, and this is your eighth roll. So all eight rolls are there, plus the one extra roll we had to do on the back side. Now we're ready to start roll 19, which is a front roll. It is the first roll of the eyelet that you see here and we're using part of the same stitches and we're adding another one like we're starting with the yarn over which we've already done now this is a slip stitch or slip one sl1 knit one psso stands for pass slip stitch over so we're going to pass this slip stitch over this knit one and then repeat between the parentheses Okay, it sounds more complicated than it is, but it gives us that nice little eyelet opening. It's used a lot in lacy sweaters and lacy tablecloths, scarves, and things of that nature. So we start with a yarn over. Let me get this yarn out of the way. Yarn over. Slip one as if to purl, so just slip it onto your right-hand needle. And we're going to knit one and then pass the slip stitch over the knit one and it's completed and that gives us our little hole so we just keep repeating it yarn over slip one knit one, knit one pass slip stitch over now i keep tension on here so the Knit one does not slip off the needle, just like I do when I'm doing a bind off. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. As I, like I said, all, this stuff is all repetitive. We just repeat the same thing over and over again on each roll. 
it helps it go faster because you don't have to stop and count or double check. There, that one was being a little bit of a difficult, but we got it. Most of them will slip really easy for you. Just every now and then you'll get one that just does not want to cooperate. I dropped it. There it is. Yarn over. Slip one. Knit one. Pass slip stitch over. Yarn over. Slip one. Knit one. Pass slip stitch over. Yarn over. Slip one. Knit one. Pass slip stitch over to the last four, two, four. So we still have four more to do. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. So we do a yarn over, slip one as if to knit, I mean as if to purl. Then yarn, knit one, pass slip stitch over. Okay, we're finished it. Now it says to last four stitches and knit four. We still have the same amount of stitches because we edit the yarn over right there, increases it, but when you pass the slip stitch over, you decrease it. So that's how you keep your same amount of stitches. And you can see the cute little hole that it forms. And then row 20 is just knit. So let's go ahead and knit 20. Just knit every stitch just like we've been doing. And the yarn over and the pass slip stitch over is not going to affect anything. Now when you get to the yarn over, you're going to look like, oh, it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. You want to knit that one. So insert your needle underneath as if you're going to knit. It'll be loose because that's where the hole is. So we're going to knit the knit. Knit the yarn over. Knit the knit. Knit the yarn over. Knit the knit, and you just repeat this all the way across. You just be careful you don't drop your yarn overs, because without that yarn over, you'll be short one stitch, and you will be missing one of your eyelet holes. And you repeat it all the way across. Now when you do the next set, we're going to stagger the eyelet one stitch. So it'll be done similar but one slight stitch difference but we're still using all the same stitches we're just about there two more and we're at the end and then we'll okay so there you can see your eyelets now we're going to do number 20 21, I mean. Okay, 21 is the same thing. The only difference is oh, we'll, uh, the yarn over fell off the page. Looky there, we're missing something. Right here is supposed to be yarn over. So the yarn over is after the um, past slip stitch over or instead of fronting of it, fronting of it. So there's a correction I need to make. That's why I like to do is a pattern after I've not done it for a while because I'll spot mistakes a lot quicker and easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We knit four. Now instead of doing the yarn over, because if we did a yarn over here, then our hole will line up with this hole and we don't want it to line up. We want it in between. So we're going to slip this one, knit this one, pass slip stitch over, then do the yarn over. So that's the only difference. The yarn over comes after the past slip stitch over. So slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, yarn over. Slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, yarn over. Slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, yarn over. 
slip one, knit one. Sometimes it gets caught underneath the yarn over, so you have to kind of separate them. And you pass slip stitch over. And you just keep repeating it all the way across. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. So as you see, it's the same thing. It's just the yarn over is after the PSSO. That's the only difference with row three. Now row five is a repeat of, uh, well, of row one. Just about complete. You'll find a lot of patterns where they'll have a slip stitch. And you always slip stitch as if to purl, which means you put the yarn, the needle in front, like here. So you put it in front instead of this way. You do it in front. That's the only, if you want to say purl action you do, is that one. So you finish with your yarn over and knit the last four. Okay, now row 22 is you knit across. And the same thing, you want to make sure you knit your yarn overs, which is right there. I just popped ahead a little ways, but it's the same thing. I'm still knitting every stitch all the way across. And then, of course, we knit the last four. And as you see, the eyelets are staggered. They're not on top of each other. All right, so now we go to number 23. As you see, it's the same as this one where you do the yarn over, slip stitch, knit one, and pass slip stitch over. So we're just repeating row 19. So you knit four. Then you yarn over, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. This puts the yarn over just one stitch off so that way they're all staggered. Always remember to do your yarn over slip one, pass the slip stitch over the knit. There's a slip stitch, so you put the needle in as if you're gonna purl, but we're not doing any yarn over, just slipping it in and taking it off. Knit one, pass slip stitch over. Now I'll complete this and go back to knit, and then it says to knit rows 25 to 33. So I'll be back after I do that. I'm just now finishing up row 33 of the knits, of the eight rows of knit. As you see, it does go fairly quickly uh, since it's all knit and nothing really super elaborate. Okay, there I finished the eighth roll of knit. Now, as you can see, there is my drop stitch and there are my little eyelets. Now, when you stretch and block this out, the, uh, the eyelets will be more pronounced. Oops, it fell off. Okay, now we go on to this one. Now this one's a little bit different. This one, after you knit four, you slip two stitches from the left needle onto the right needle as if to purl while keeping the yarn in back of your work. Then you knit two, but don't pull the yarn across the back tight. Keep it loose and repeat until you get to the last six stitches and knit six. Okay, so we're going to knit four. All the action on this one happens on the back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-
three, four. Okay, now I'm gonna slip two as if to purl. So I slip one, slip two. Now you knit the next two. So I hold these with my fingers and bring the yarn over, but you wanna keep the yarn loose. Knit one, two. See, they kept the yarn loose back there. So we're gonna do it again. Slip two as if to knit. Hold this, that way the yarn can't pull tight. And then I hold this one like that. I also help keep it from pulling tight because you wanna to try to keep this as loose as possible all the way across. So you slip one, slip two, hold it, yarn over one or knit one knit two, slip one, slip two, hold it, that way you've got the, it's loose, knit one, knit two, nope, that one fell off, there, you want to keep it loose, okay, so you slip one, slip two, hold it, you want to keep it loose. Knit one, knit two, slip two, knit one, knit two, slip two, see two, four, six. Okay, so then you knit the last six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now each time we slip and knit, the numbers here change and the numbers here change because these little slip stitches that we're making are gonna stagger across. They're not gonna line up perfectly even. They're gonna go in an angle. Okay, now the next one, 35 is just knit across. So there's really nothing elaborate here. You just, when you get to the, the little horizontal bar, which is this right here, you ignore it. You knit above it. You don't want to include this bar in your work because that's the decoration. I did a lot of research trying to find only decorative stitches that are knit and Surprisingly, there's only a few, very few. And these were the two easiest ones. And that's why I chose to do them in this third scarf. Now, once you've done the, the, these scarves here, you've pretty much got a handle on your knit stitch. So then you can proceed with knit, uh, with purling. And you've already got the practice with purling because whenever we slipped, we purled. So you've had practice at purling without yarning over. But when you actually purl, you will yarn over. But in this case, there is none. And I believe there's 10 rolls to this pattern. Okay, we're just about done with this one. Okay. So when you look here, you can see the little slip stitches right there and there. Now when you look at this, it's a little more pronounced because you're doing every other roll. So that way, this, these stitches are pronounced, stuck up in front, where when you did the slip stitches, it's kind of hard to see here, but they kind of recess back a little bit. See how they kind of recess back? So that way these stitches stick more forward. All right, let's do the next one, which is roll 36. Now I didn't do the long explanation here. It's just knit five. See, before we knitted four, so here we're gonna knit five. So we're moving it over one stitch. Okay, so let's move this up a little bit. So it's, Okay, that's better. Okay, so we knit five. And 
and then we slip two, knit two, and repeat. Slip two, knit two, slip two, knit two, slip two, knit two, slip two. As you can see, it is very repetitious. And it says do this to the last five stitches. So let's see where I'm at. Two, four, two, four, five. So I still have two left. So I slip two and knit the last five. Now the same again. Row 37 is a knit. And this is repeated three more times and each time you do it you move your beginning stitch over one like in the first time we knitted four and then we started the slip the second time we knitted five and began the slip the next time we'll begin with six before we start the slip and I think the last one begins with seven we'll get to that page real quick I just want to go ahead and get this one knitted across Just about done. Okay, so now you can see the slip stitch is a little better, they're a little bit more pronounced. Now we go to the next one. See, the next one is knit six before we start the slip. And then the next one is knit seven before we start the slip. I'm going to go ahead and do those. They're exactly the same as before. Like I said, the only difference is the starting point. We start this one with six. Five, six. And then we start the slip two knit two slip two knit two now go ahead and complete these last four rolls and as you as you've seen them so there's i really don't think i would should waste your time and have you watch me do the same thing over and over again whoops yeah slip two knit two slip two knit two now this one will end with a different amount here it says uh, that the last seven stitches slip two and knit five okay so we have to watch out for the last seven stitches I know I'm not quite there yet okay now I'll count Two, four, six. I'm missing one. Evidently in my talking, I lost one stitch back in here somewhere. But I'll double check and find it. And then, of course, you would, like I said, slip two and knit, to knit the last five. I'm going to go back and take these apart and double check. Okay, so here is like two, four, five, six, seven. So... Two, four, five. Uh, see, oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Should have been up here on the six. Two, four, six. Okay, so I did end up right with the four. And then I'll knit those, and then I will. This is incorrect here. 
There should not be two nits there. This is, this is wrong. See, we found a mistake already because the, every other roll is knit. So this is a boo-boo, so we have to take this one out. But then we will knit seven and end with five and then knit again. So I'll go ahead and get this done and I'll be right back. As you can see, I finished up the fourth set. So you got your four dashes or whatever you want to call them. I don't think there is a name for it, but they're just, they're slip stitches, okay? So now when you go to the next page, the next eight rows you knit across, just like we did here. But when you look at the next set, it's knit four, yarn over, slip stitch, knit one pass, slip stitch over. As you can see, you're repeating this part again. Then after you do all three of these, then it says to repeat after you do your other eight rows of knit, you repeat one through 64. So if you look here, you can see there's the yarn overs we did. And here is the eyelets that we did where we're the, the yarn over slip one knit, one pass slip stitch over. And here you can see our dashed lines. And then it says to repeat the yarn over slip one knit, one pass slip stitch over. So that you have it here and here that, that completes your whole set let me bring this out that completes your whole pattern right there and then when it says repeat again you're going to start with the drop stitch do the eyelets the dashes the eyelets again and then you're back to the beginning so you do your drop stitches eyelets dashes eyelets and you keep repeating and you make it to whatever length you want Keep going, keep going. You can go until you run out of yarn. You can add another ball and keep on going. See, I stopped here, but I went ahead and finished one set of drop stitches on this end, that end, so it matches the drop stitches on this end. And of course, I finished off with excuse me, eight rolls of knit, and then I bound off. And at this point, you would block it, so all your eyelets really stand out or just let it hang and it'll gradually stretch out on its own because yarn will relax over the course of time. But if you don't want it to relax, make sure you keep it all folded up, then it won't relax on you. But I wanted to thank you for watching. This one is the third in the series of the basic scarves knit one, two, and three. Unfortunately, I don't, oh, here it is. Here they all are. There's one, two, and three. These are all on the same pattern. When you go to my website, stitchniche.com, it's right here on this one. And I think I also have it on ravelry.com. If not, I'll have it done shortly. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click notifications so when I do the next um, a scarf you will be able to see it as soon as it comes available just to give you a prelude to what's coming up next unfortunately i can't find page one but page one just shows all the scarves and it's called five fashion scarves the first one is the arrows ruffled scarf which i've already done we've got the full flare at the bottom and then it's narrow at the top the next one in that set is the fuzzy scarf which is done with a new fuzzy yarn I've just gotten in my shop and it's really soft and really, really yummy. The one after that is the Twisted Knot, which is a very interesting stitch. You, I'll bring it up so you can see it. It's really an interesting little stitch. Now the back looks different, but the back is very unique too. But this one is called the Twisted Knot. Very simple, only four rolls, and this one is all knit. The next one for this group is the diagonal rib scarf. And as you can see, it's you can see the diagonal rib going up. And this is done with a knit and a purl. And the last one is the bias tassel scarf. As you can see, it goes on an angle. So this will be the next set I'll be working on. But I just wanted to give you a quick little tidbit. So keep watching.